Hey up lads and lasses, Danfar here, back again with uh, some more Galaxy Reavers 2 tutorials. Um, just a quick one, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, it helps me out, helps the channel out. And yeah, we'll uh, jump into it. So I've done one of these before. Uh, we did the weapons last time, so we're going to look at the tacticals this time. I'm going to show you the upgrade paths and the R&D paths of each of the tacticals. So we're going to start off quick with the B batteries. Uh, we've got to scroll down a bit for this because there is only purple and below. So we have the B battery. Gives energy recovery. There's not much really going on here. And that upgrades the large B battery. Again, I don't currently recommend using these at all. They're pretty much useless. I mean, even this one gives 26%. I don't know what it is maxed out because I've never upgraded one. I don't think anybody I know has. Uh, it's just not particularly useful. We then go up, back up, we have the mini defense barrier. So this is a cool device, unfortunately I haven't found much use for it at the moment because it only affects the front of a ship. Um, so what this does is, uh, yeah, it bounces back projectiles. The upgrade paths of this are into the large defense battery, we get a larger screen, a wider area to project more projectiles, or you can go into the BD barriers. The BD barrier is the small uh, screen, but this will also block laser fire. This is a little bit more useful, uh, but again, it's not massively useful. This on potentially uh, a carrier at the moment, where you've got Linua on her, uh, Dr. Linua, because everyone's trying to kill her off quickly for obvious reasons. Uh, this could keep her alive a little bit longer, so it could be useful there, but again, you're going to be stuck in frontal, which means you can get flanked. We then have the Jamming Combat Network. So the Jamming Combat Network um, upgrades into the large Jamming CN. These increase abnormal augmentation. And finally, increases to the Global Jamming CN. The Global Jamming CM, CN uh, increases uh, your immunity to status effects. This is including things like fire and energy uh, reduction. So this might actually be quite cool. And, and increases the damage or the ability, chance of you healing abnormal stat uh, statuses. So this lets you uh, apply fire a little bit more consistently. consistently. And yeah, it's pretty good. Um, because it has the jewel, you could probably potentially have two ships, one of the Global Command CN and the Global Jamming CN, and have something very uh, toward dealing a lot of fire or energy neutralization. It might actually work quite well. Uh, next up, uh, we have the anti-jamming. The anti-jamming starts and ends with the anti-jamming CN. This is basically the opposite of the large jamming CN, and it does not upgrade into the global jamming CN. Uh, it only uh, upgrades into this, which reduces your abnormal uh, chances. Going to the uh, strike now. Uh, if I can find it. So we have the Strike CN. So the Strike CN gives a flat crit rate to all ships within the vicinity of when this effect goes off. It's a pretty good duration. Uh, it then goes into the Large Strike CN. Again, even more crit rate. And then finally, the God tier of the CNs, the Global Command CN. This gives flat damage resistances against all damage types, thermal, kinetic, and electromagnet uh, electromagnetic. And gives you a base crit rate as well, so this is a fantastic. This up your, ups your damage and ups your defense all in one go. I highly recommend trying to get a ship running one of these because it's just so powerful at the moment. We then have the fast operational network, uh, which I have to scroll all the way down this way to, I believe. I don't think I've seen a purple version of one of these as of yet. The fast operational network upgrades into the large rapid CN or the UAV's Assault CN. So the Large Rapid CN gives you a dodge rate and increases your movement speed. This is actually very, very strong at the moment. Um, I've been running one of these on just the Tier 1 version. My monster in replace of a transition device. It's giving me better survivability and it's giving me basically the same effect as a transition device as it's just rapidly moving me into a position where the monster needs to be but giving me the ability to dodge everything at the same time. The large rapid CN just improves on this, increasing the dodge rate. The movement speed doesn't change. 
and we have UAVs Assault CN. Increases dodge rate and crit damage and damage and speed and, and speed of the UAVs. On a Fenrir, this might be very strong. I'm currently working on upgrading one at the current moment to hopefully test it out on the Fenrir because that is a UAV specific ship. If you're not running UAVs on it, you're doing it wrong. Uh, as opposed to, say, an Immortal, where this is less useful because the chances are you're not running any UAVs on it. Uh, so yeah, I'll be testing this out at some point in the future. We then go back up and we have the Tactical Anti-Ship uh, torpedoes, uh, which I can find shortly. They're here somewhere. Stop hiding. There we go. We have the tactical anti ship torpedo. Uh, this is quite a nice torpedo uh, with the upgrade path, is anyway. It goes from the uh, tactical anti ship torpedo into the comets and eventually ends with the CT torpedo X. This increases uh, the amount of damage it does the closer it is to the target, which is uh, great. You just you can transition in, let one of these off, and you got a massive increase in damage just from being able to do that. I run one of these on my um, uh, my tornado at the moment. It's uh, five slots. It fits nicely on the back with my dual uh, cannons, and on the front I have the global CN. We then move over to the tactical anti-ship missiles. These tactical anti-ship missiles fire off a small volley. They do high EM damage, which is quite good. It does increase damage versus shields most of the time. Into the large trial and eventually the improved end missile. The improved end missiles and the large trial both do increased damage. The higher target, the energy the higher the target energy, the less damage. This basically means the lower damage, uh, the lower the energy of the target ship, the higher the damage it deals. This is quite good because it's a great finisher later on in a battle when a lot of people have spent most of their energy. It lets you just torpedo in and potentially just finish something off very rapidly. We then go into the honeycombs. You have the tactical honeycomb missile into the large therm T tactical honeycomb missile. I'm guessing that meant to mean into the heavy TH missile. Not bad, they are missiles, so they have a bit of tracking as well. Uh, they're a multi-warhead attack, and apparently they disrupt anti-aircraft weapons, which is completely useless to us because no one's running anti-aircraft weapons, there's no room for them on a ship. We then go over to the small care black holes, uh, which is back up here. I don't personally own these, but they do damage over time, within the area that they're uh, deployed. They also pull all of the ships into the center of their mass, which is quite cool. You go from small to large to giant. One of the coolest looking uh, abilities in the game. Oh, that. It's in that ass. Uh, I've used these quite, su I've seen them being used, sorry, quite successfully in mixtures with uh, T nukes and that sort of thing where you got massive AoE damage pot, uh, abilities so you group them all up and you hit them with a big AoE. Uh, we can move on to transitions so the transition device uh, I can find one of those as well. We're all hiding today. Da -da, there you go. So you have a transition device this goes into the large transition device uh, which is not that one, that's the thruster. Wait, does the blue not go into a large? Wow, I did not know that. We can have a look at the thrusters as well. So you have the small thruster, goes into the large thruster. You then have two choices here. You have the small HP thruster, which is for smaller, medium-sized uh, ships, so up to cruisers. Uh, this works quite efficiently. This has an increase uh, time that it'll uh, be open for, so you'll be accelerating for longer and keeping your top speed up for longer. But it's a large LA prop, uh, prop, which is also for small to medium ships, but this increases the speed on a shorter duration, so this moves it faster with the shorter duration. And there's a large transition device. So that's two out of the way. We then have stealth, so you have the small stealth systems, 
These make you invulnerable basically for a period of time. Three seconds on this and it goes into the large stealth system where you have a duration of four seconds. I can't remember what these go up to. I do have one upgraded. The dodge rate's quite nice, but it's more about the fact that it breaks targeting completely. So if you've got a monster being targeted by the entire enemy fleet, when you pop this device, all of them will break targeting on that ship and try and target something else. In an AI battle, this is actually quite good because the AI won't just try and retarget the ship. And even in a player versus player battle like Arena, sometimes they don't notice that they've stopped targeting the monster. And you can get away with it. We have the SR, so these are the shield repair systems. So these uh, give you a base durability uh, percent. So the higher shield durability, the more these are going to rep. The bigger the shields, the better these are. This upgrades into the large SR system. These are very good defensive um, devices, so I can highly recommend these as well. I run these on almost all of my ships where I can try and fit one. Uh, the exception to that is my Legion where I'm running a T1 uh, crit CN. That's just to get the crit rate up a bit more consistently, keeping its 100% crit rate up and going. We then go on to the EMPs where we have the EMP device. This um, does not work at all like this. It's actually around your ship. If it was targeted, it would be absolutely and utterly busted, I believe. Uh, but this will stop ships from firing and stop them using uh, their ability. So if they're in the middle of a laser uh, volley, so they're firing off their large main laser gun, you pop this EMP, you transition in, pop this EMP, and it just kills it, it stops that uh, laser from firing. EMP device goes into the large EMP device and there is nothing after this. This just increases the damage a little bit which you don't really need to worry about. The damage is pretty minimal uh, but it decreases cooling time a little bit so it's not too bad. We then have the NT fields so we have the energy NT here which upgrades on one of two paths so you can either go energy NT field to large EN field these reduce the amount of energy the um, enemies have it's odd that this is around the ship because this one is targeted I'm not sure if they mix this up with the EMP uh, but this one will target anywhere around and will reduce the energy on the ship this coupled with uh, Dr. Lenua is ridiculous at the moment. I'm expecting Dr. Lanua to get nerfed. If you haven't seen her, what she does is she stops energy recovery by 100%, so they no longer recover energy at all. It's pretty busted, especially when you've got large EN fields. You've got two of these on two ships, and you just nuke all of the energy on the enemy ships, and they just can't do anything at that point. They can't fire their tactical. Sometimes they can't even fire their common weapons. Uh, the upgrade path, the energy NT field, is also into the static hyster hysteresis field. I have no idea how you're meant to pronounce that properly. Uh, it does that. If you speak Chinese, congratulations, you know more than me about what that means. What I can tell you is it creates a nice little field around the enemy, except on myself apparently now, which stops ships, stops all projectiles. It does not stop lasers, though. Lasers can still fire through it. This does also not affect your ship at all. So if your ship uh, flies through it haphazardly, it won't affect it at all. It will still remain at its full speed, and all its weapons will be firing with no issue. The enemy, though, they're going to have a bad day because all of their weapons have now become pretty much redundant the duration of this device. We have the DMGs. These are one of the main laser types. So you have the DMG gun. This upgrades into the large HG gun. And then we have a split. So the large HE gun can split one of two ways. You have the heavy HE gun, which can be fitted to all ship types. Uh, sorry, battleships only. Uh, and it deals massive amounts of damage. It's mostly EM damage. It's also got a bonus against shields. And it has a slight slow to it as well. This can do a lot of damage very, very quickly. 
And the other type that it can go into is the dual DMG, uh, which is for Legion only. I'm not sure I can see it in here. I cannot. So the Legion only version of the dual HG has more damage and instead of firing the single beam, it fires two beams and has pretty much all the same effects except more damage. The fact that it's Legion only is not great because it does mean it's stuck to a single ship where this heavy HG can be fitted onto multiple ships. We then move on to the antimatters uh, torpedoes. Uh, so we have the antimatter torpedo here. It's not bad. It's a crit based weapon, has 100% crit rate, so it's always going to crit. This goes into the AM Torpedo X, uh, which is just a bigger, better version. 100% crit rate, so it's always going to crit. If you can get this onto a ship that has increased uh, crit damage on torpedoes and increased uh, torpedo damage, this can do quite a lot of damage very quickly. We then go to the T bullets, so we have tactical bullets. This has a lock on so it can never miss. It fires bolts out, or sort of like that, which home in and hit the ship. Damage isn't particularly good on this, but the fact they can always and guarantee a hit is quite nice against dodge frigates, which have been popping up a fair bit uh, nowadays. The upgrade path for this is the large into the large T bullets and into the heavy TN bomb. These are basically all the same, they just increase their damage as they go. We then go into the small lasers, uh, main weapons. So you have the small laser. This is your typical laser. Uh, yep, there's not much I can really say about this. It has sustained damage, it just suits at one target and keeps dealing damage over ticks. The upgrade path is the small laser into the large laser, into the heavy LM gun. The heavy LM gun, again, just dealing more and more damage. Note that this is for cruisers and above only though. So you can't get these on destroyers. We then have the uh, T nukes. Uh, if I can find those. Yeah, this will do. So we have T nukes here. Uh, the upgrade paths are quite nice for these. So you have the T nukes and the T nuke X. Both of these have uh, making the target on fire, which is not a bad ability. Uh, it's a shame that it's. E to keep the fire effect up, it takes quite a lot. Uh, you could pair this with the uh, jamming uh, global CN. That might work better. But it turns into the dust maker. Now the dust maker is very powerful. It buys off its ability, hits something, and leaves this dust cloud. So it hits for a lot of damage for a torpedo. And this dust cloud reduces the range that the enemies can fire at. So if they're in that cloud, they're going to have to try and get closer to try and get shots off at you. If you have a short range fleet, these are quite cool. Because that forces the opponent to come in close to you, allowing you to close the gap at the same time. We then go to the tactical anti-ship torpedoes. So this is the one that ends with the comet tactical. So you have the tactical anti-ship into the comet tactical and into the CT torpedoes. The CT torpedoes are another type variant of the torpedo. This one has increased damage the closer they are to the uh, target and the higher damage. Then I go into the Reapers. Uh, it's Reaper into Reaper into Reaper. These have increased damage as they go. They're also a missile type so they have a slight bit of homing to them which is not too bad so you can normally get these off and get them onto a target a bit easier than the torps. But these do more damage the lower the target durability. These are quite good as they work a bit like a deconstruction ray where the lower the uh, target's durability is the higher damage it is and they're a great finishing weapon. Last up we have the explosive shotgun. The exploding shotgun path goes into the large explosion shotgun and to the heavy explosive shotgun. These have a kinetic resistance minus 15% on the target, so it's a debuff on the target as well as doing pretty damn good uh, damage for a tactical. If you're running a, a kinetic damage heavy fleet, I highly recommend trying to grab hold of one of these. But yeah, that's about it for the tacticals. Uh, if I've missed any, drop a comment below. I'm pretty sure I got them all though. 
I have a bit more information. We are expecting some more content coming for the game soon, I've been told by the devs. Uh, this is to address some of the endgame issues as the lack of endgame. And also some of the weapons that you see here, for example the cannons in gold and uh, uh, Aurelicons, Aurelicons in gold uh, that don't actually exist in game are being put into the game over, well, they also mentioned soon. I don't know what soon it means for them. Hopefully within another month because, uh, yeah, it needs to be in another month I reckon, within the month. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed the content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And I'll catch you guys next time.